Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I am well. I am well. How are you? It's Joe. Is that yes, right? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Joe Thank Domino. You. And I see it down in the left hand corner of your screen now. I wasn't paying attention. So, yeah. Good. Well, it's great. Where are you coming out of? We live on Amelia Island, Florida, just north of Jacksonville, if you know where that is. Okay. Well, no, I, I mean, I can only imagine that there's a lot of good things to look at around there. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice place. Yeah, we it's a little uh, two two by thirteen island, and uh, it's a former pirate colony. So you got got a little bit of a uh, little bit of that from uh, three or four hundred years ago. But uh, we're we're technically in Florida, but you can see Georgia uh, literally from across the uh, marina. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, I was uh, um, I actually went this weekend to a pirate themed wedding at one of our we have a renaissance festival and it was totally weird so it was cool <laughs> that's it yeah they they do the pirate society comes out here it was it was actually illegal to live here like under when the uh, british um were in charge they were um because there were so many pirates and all but but it's a it's a sleepy little uh sleepy little town uh it's almost like a south georgia town with the beach is what okay so, uh, kind of yeah I think the only thing that really jolted me when I went down south, I drove from, we were in Panama City for a dance competition about four years ago, and I'd never seen boiled peanuts. And I walked in, I was like, why is all that in water? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, sir, you find those down in this part of the world. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah so, sure. but I'm coming from Kansas City, so, you know, um, the land of my homes, so to speak. Been been there many times. Been a, right been a while, but uh, but uh, yeah. Last last time I was there, I actually uh, caught a, a caught a, a baseball game, and it was a uh, hundred degrees in the shade. So but, uh, <laughs> it gets <laughs> uh, it gets hot out there. I don't know what it is about Kaufman, but it gets hot in a way that's not like other places. Yeah, yeah. So. It's surprising. We had had to get back to Florida where it was cool. So. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> Which just sounds weird, you know? So, well, hey, it's great to meet you. I love your story. And, you know, I got a lot of personal things that go into what you've gone through and what you've done. So we'll kind of peel back the layers. Um, but what I, wanted, what I want to do to begin the conversation is to acknowledge this pandemic for the last three and a half years we went through. How did you get through it? And how has it changed you now that we're kind of in this post-pandemic era of our lives? You know the the pandemic um, really it, it was it was kind of interesting. My the, my weight loss journey was never intended to be a intended to be a business. It was just because I didn't want to die, and uh, and I realized I realized all the all the the things that I had was not doing because I was a morbidly obese three hundred pound guy that was five eleven. I'm, I'm not seven feet tall, so three hundred pounds doesn't go as far. And, uh, and, but we, uh, but the point being is the pandemic, um, you know, it was really during a time when people were reaching out to me for help with their, with their weight and reaching out to my wife, cause we'd had a journey. And, and so it was kind of an opportunity to help a lot of people that were struggling with their weight during that time, you know, because we, we get in a, I think we get in a belief pattern that, if I can't get out and do certain things that I'm going to gain weight, that that's, uh, I've got to sit in front of the TV and, and, and eat the single serving sizes of, uh, of Doritos, which say family on for some reason, I never have figured that out. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and we, we get in these belief patterns and create these stories that it's, this got to be this way. So, you know, we, we watch people during the pandemic uh, lose a ton of weight. And, uh, and as, and, and I, I don't know if that's really where you were, what you're asking the question, but that's where, where my mind always goes yeah. because, because yeah. so many, so many people say, well, gosh, during the pandemic, I gained weight. Well, you know, and I can appreciate that. And I, and I can understand how that is, that's easier to get into those patterns. But the real question is, were you gaining weight before the pandemic? Were you gaining, like I was, I mean, I was gaining five, 10 pounds a year or, or whatever the, the pandemic didn't really change anything as far as the as far as those patterns they don't they don't have to it it's like if we live in such a, a blessed you know plentiful 
time in the in history. I mean, think about it. I mean, you go to the freaking grocery store and just walk down the aisle and buy anything you want, go to, go to markets and all kinds of things, which is great. But but it's but it also can become one of those things where it's it creates limitations. You know, we we sort of hide in the food we we eat. I mean, every day's a holiday. I mean, every day's a every day's a birthday. I mean, you got a birthday. My, my, I'll be sixty two this week, um, and and so my kids came over. You know, everything's food oriented, and that's fine for certain things. But but at the end of the day. If if somebody's weight is stopping them from doing things, if somebody's weight is on their mind, if they're thinking about uh, when they go into a business meeting, I wonder what people are thinking about me because of my weight, or or if they're using coping mechanisms when they walk into a situation where they're saying making jokes about their weight. Well, that's that's a drag. It's like carrying it. You know, we as we were talking earlier, we, we live in a in a former pirate town in uh, Amelia Island, Florida, Fernandina Beach. But but the but it's like carrying an anchor around with you. I mean, it, it is, and that and that's one of the things I've noticed is so interesting working with so many men and women. I know it's counterintuitive, but we always think about well, I get my if I get my weight in check, then then my health will be great. Well, that doesn't get much leverage for people. Unfortunately, it should. I mean, unless somebody just had a heart attack or they're, you know, uh, something really, really a major, major um, health consequence. Because we always believe it's going to be the other guy that dies of the heart attack. We always believe it's going to be the other woman that 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 gets, you know, has a stroke and is in a wheelchair. And or we always have we have these beliefs that it's never going to be us. And and I. And, and I hope it's never any of the people that are listening to this that are struggling with their weight. But it's but it's so interesting that we miss all these other things. We miss the fact that, and this is crazy, but do you know weight gain is the number three cause of divorce in America? Wow. That that blew me away when I found that statistic. I mean, my wife, my wife loved me at 300 pounds. She loved me at, at 200 pounds, loved me at 175, whatever, whatever weight I was. And and we and I hear that a lot from people too. They say, "Well, my my significant other loves me no matter what." Well, and this is something that occurred to me not not that terribly long ago, but maybe about a year or so ago. It's so interesting how the significant others will love you at your ideal weight too. Mm-hmm. And and maybe they're worrying. Like my wife was worrying every night when she kissed me. She would she was wasn't one of these to nag me about my weight, but she was. But every night she said she wondered if I was going to, if that was going to mean the, the morning that I didn't wake up, the morning that I had the massive heart attack, the morning that I had a stroke, the morning that she had to call 911. She never told me this. And so she was carrying this burden. I was carrying this massive amount of weight, you know, over 100 pounds of, of extra weight on my body. And, and it was stopping me in so many ways. I mean, we we see clients who get, you know, Joe, they they come alive when their weight starts to come off. It's just crazy. It's a momentum shift. It, it really is. And it's not it's not just about the physical. The physical is important. I want people to live till they're 150 years old. I want them to have great physical health, all that, and be mobile. But we see people that when they get their weight, get momentum in that area, it's it's almost like, and I, I won't preach to you, but it's like God is saying, if you'll tackle this area, if you'll tackle this area that's so simple, it's not easy. I mean, I, there's no question it's not easy, but if but it's so simple. If you'll tackle this area of of your challenge, uh, this challenge, and we all know how to do it. I've never met a soul that didn't know how to get the weight off. Okay, just to be clear. I've never and I've never told one person what to eat, or I've never told one person what exercise to do because that's never the problem. And that's what we always want to believe is the problem. But when they get that going in the right direction it's interesting how the floodgates start to open up in other areas yeah i mean and and it really is and so pandemic i you know i it's so easy to and, and we we lost it like my mom my, my i said my mom but she's my mother-in-law my my wife's mother who lived with us she she passed away because of uh, COVID. so we so it's very close to our heart we, it's something that we we know it's real it was a big deal we can also use it to let it hold us back and say, and, it, and it's just, we don't have to, we don't have to let those situations be that. So 
I, I gave you about a 45 minute answer on them. No, you did good. You, you're <laughs> filling out the constellation of our verbal map here. And I, and I appreciate it because I'll fill in the holes. Um, so what I want to know is if I put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day, one of the kids looks up and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I, I say I help people find this potential that you know you have by helping them release the weight that they're carrying. So like a third grader, that, that third grader, if you ask them if they can dance, they'll say yes. Yeah. If you ask them if they can sing, they'll say yes. Yeah. If you ask them if they can write, they'll say yes. The people who are morbidly obese will say no because of the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost every time. Almost yeah. every time. Oh, I totally get it. Absolutely. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? You know, when I was in the third grade, I I really didn't have this glaring thing that I want to be. I just didn't. I just wanted to have fun. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I mean, it is. It, and, and it's uh, and then and then this crazy thing happened. I found a five dollar bill in a parking lot. Seriously. Let's get my hair cut. It was about third grade too. I, it's funny. I, I'm thinking back. I was and we were in Charlotte, North Carolina, and had two older brothers. I was the youngest of three, and my dad was taking us to get a haircut. And it's all. And this is, you know, I'm I was born in '61, so we're talking five bucks was worth a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And I said, Stop the car, and and I ran out there, and I and I got this five dollar bill that had somebody had lost uh, in the middle of it. There's nobody around. And, and it was interesting. It was the first time I had my own money, it, other than when my dad gave me an allowance or something like that. You know, it wasn't. And it was in. And then I turned that into I ended up loaning it to my brother. And uh, and I I was a loan shark in third grade. He was uh, 10 years older than me, but he he would always go through his go through his cash and he, he would borrow the five and pay me back 10. And my dad made me stop. And so I had to figure out another way. So I started mowing lawns not short, not long after that to make money. So it was kind of interesting. I just I just wanted to wanted to have that freedom and then uh, the, the freedom to have fun, really. Yeah. And I knew money was part of that. So let me ask you this. It, it, you obviously have had to really change and transform your existence. What who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration, a motivator for you to get to where you are today? It's a great question. You know, I think about honestly a, a guy that's been a mentor for a long, long time, Dan Miller. Um, Dan is a if you know who he is, he's um, he he started a he was flat broke, um, and another guy was flat broke that he went to church with. That one guy, uh, Dan, I think owed the IRS about four hundred thousand dollars on a bad business deal. The other guy had just filed bankruptcy. And um, they started Sunday school classes teaching. This is in Nashville, Tennessee, teaching these other other people how to do stuff. Um, my my friend Dan, my mentor Dan, he he taught people how to find work that they loved. And the other guy was Dave Ramsey. He taught people how to get out of debt. And they 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 kind of came up together. And, uh, and but Dan is Dan just believes in possibilities. And it was interesting when I went through my weight journey. He said, man, you ought to help people with that. And I said, that's the dumbest thing you've ever said to me. I, I don't tell people what to eat. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but, he's a, but he's a hero because he just does not see limitations. He's, uh, I think Dan's 75, 76. But if you met him, you would think about 50. Yeah. You would think he was really young. And he he just keeps expanding his, his influence, helping people. And it's pretty cool to see. That is cool. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, Someone you really admire, who would it be? That's alive on the planet right now. Man, that's a good question. Hmm. That's a really good question. That's alive right now. I have to because there's so many that are not alive that I would <laughs> that I would well, love to go. Have. We could open the door up. Let's open it up to both sides. I would I, I'd want to meet Edison. Yeah. I want to meet. I want to meet Edison. I want to know, because his attitude was so good. One of the things that impressed me about him was was when he, when his factory burned down. When and and the story I can't remember how where heard it and I, and I believe it's true. You know, but he but he was 
every all his experiments were being torched. I mean, it was you know there was no backup on hard drive off sites uh, or you know or in the cloud or anything. And all this knowledge was gone. And he said to his son, he said, "Oh, run, go get your mother. She she's going to want to see this. There's likely not to be another event that's that this this neat to watch." And they were, he was literally watching his whole life's work burn down. And the next day, his family was like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? He said, just he said, just think of it. All of our mistakes have been erased now. We can start new. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. All our mistakes are. Uh, now, this is the guy who invented, you know, just crazy, uh, you know, all the things that he was so far ahead of his time. But the attitude, that that perception, uh, I, I think I want to meet meet him. Price, too. Uh, you know, but we're going to meet him anyway. But but uh, as far as just a historical figure of BS. That's interesting, because that's almost like the definition of existentialism, which would be the cornerstone of doing something like losing a lot of weight. You have to get to that point where you just say, this is where I begin. I don't blame what happened before. I don't look at these things, because if you get stuck in that mindset, you get mired in what made you who you were before. So if you decide, I remember I, I got to a point in my life because my folks were were overweight. I grew up in a house where they just didn't do that much. And there was there, there was kind of a lack of motivation. Um, and I remember at one point they were going to Weight Watchers and my dad complained because the stairwell was so steep to climb up, up and down out of it. And I'm like, dude, you're going to get weight off. This is a part of it. But it's that yeah. idea. And I've, I always saw it. I saw how it affected, how it can get in your mentality. And my dad passed in 08. He was 64. Oh, and everybody sorry. just kept talking about how, wow. you know, he was young, you know. And now I just sure. turned 51. And I think, you know, I'm getting there. But you just, you have to make choices. And I remember getting rid of things like fast food and all of these things. But I did this holistic thing where I wanted to work out and I wanted to do these things. But I definitely wanted to do it for 90 days. Hammer in mm -hmm. this habit get to the point where it's a part of my DNA and then go from there. But it's not easy, but it does. It's like no. you said, it's a domino effect that can, that can translate to a lot of light spilling into your life. hundred mm -hmm. percent. I mean, it is, and it, and it begins and I, and I tell people all the time, I mean, it's, it's so interesting. I, I ask, you know, one of the questions that I ask people is if you, is if you were, at, if you met the creator of the universe and he introduced you to the version of yourself, you could be, at your present age, what does that person weigh? And and if and if there's a gap, I said, okay. Now if there's a gap, I said, if it, if your entire family has been taken hostage, all the people you love, okay, and everybody you love's uh, been taken hostage, the only way you get them back is to close the gap by a pound a week, or you lo or they lose their life. Could you save their life? If nobody told you what to eat, nobody told you what exercise to do, you, you got to do, you, but you got to do something sensible. You can't do anything crazy. You have to do just what you intuitively know would work because yeah. we all know what, I mean, if you live in a first world country, you know what, you know what works. I mean, it's not that complicated. Could you save their life? And they always say yes. They always say yes. And, and it's because, so it's so interesting to me, like what you're talking about, it begins with that decision. And and I I tested this. I, a client of mine from a few years back, he was a guy that was in a wheelchair. If he had to walk more than four, more than 10 feet and um, 450 pounds, 5'10", um, you know, just a really neat guy. And he, he'd never been on a diet in his life. Um, and, and I tell, tell him, I'm never telling you what to eat out of the day. Because that's not the problem. If that were the problem, everybody would have six-pack abs and be perfect, you know, in skinny jeans, and all the women would be size perfect, and the men would be size perfect. We look like a James Bond movie. Yeah. But clearly, we know that's not it. You you have to change what you eat. I know that. But it's so funny. I asked this individual, his name Sean. I asked this individual. He well, he said to me, he said, "But what am I going to eat? How am I going to lose this weight?" I said, "Well," and I asked him that question about if your family was taken hostage. And I said, what would you do then? How would you get the weight off? And he thought for about 10 or 20 seconds, seemed like I was on a phone call, it wasn't a Zoom call, but before we did a lot of Zoom. And, and he says, I have the answer. I said, what would it be? He was dead serious. He was not kidding. He said, I'm going to eat less. I mean, it's now it. that is almost, it sounds comical, Right. To say it right now. And I said, that's exactly where you start. Now that now he's 170, 180 pounds gone and still going. 
by the way, and, and he's not in a wheelchair. And it, because it's it's the decision, like you talked about, it's the decision. And does it, it doesn't have to be this perfect diet or this perfect exercise plan either, which is so, which is so funny. Do you need to change what you, of course you do. But, but at the end of the day, if you start where you are, you figure it out along the way. It's just like anything. It's like you, you've done a lot of podcasts, haven't you, Joe? Yes. Do you, do you know things now that you didn't know on day one? Of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, like a million things. I mean, because you've done a lot of podcasts that stuff you forgot more than most people know. But at the end, of, at the end of the day, you're willing to start and made the decision to cut off all possibility that that you were you because I'll bet you when you go back and listen to those original ones, you probably didn't like some of the things you heard yourself say. You're like, oh, I should have said this or should have said that if you're human. And I think you are. And and, and, and you and you want to do that. But at the end of the day, you 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 made you don't get to have the thousandth step if you don't take the first step true that's so true and that's the thing i think that you realize it comes with age youth can't wrap their head around it it really is about a journey you know you got to get to a point where you know i think that's the one thing that can be a fallacy of losing weight is that some people will do it and lose a lot and then they go into shock and they just go right back up it's like that's the idea that i kept ingraining was that it has to be this habit 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 not this life event let's see what happens it's got to be something that gets ingrained so that after you know that 90 days i'm like this is what i did and this is a part of what i feel it's for momentum it's just getting into that rhythm you know and and wanting to do it and of course living with I'm, that I'm sure. the, the idea of being around um that mentality of being overweight you just don't want to see it you don't want to replicate it you want to do something different and that's it that can be a motivator in itself sure it, it can be but you know ironically it, it usually works the other way so congratulations to you for i mean typically you know it's it's the brian tracy saying you we're you know, you're likely the five per people you're spending most time with and people, it's not just income, it's weight. And, but, but one thing you said about habit, it does, but habits have to begin with somewhere. It's, I really challenge people to really decide what identity they want to fake. Because there, if somebody's 500 pounds, you know, like somebody's 100 pounds of weight, 50 pounds of weight, 20 pounds of weight, 200 pounds, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but I'm saying, for the discussion that I'm the example I'm using, decide which identity you you want. If you want the identity of the the guy that weighs 304 pounds like I did, then I mean, you know, God loves you no matter what size you are. I believe, uh, yeah. but it doesn't mean it's a good decision. But but at the end of the day, but if you want to be the the 200 pound version or the 175 pound version or whatever, then then it's an identity shift. The habits will follow the identity. Mm -hmm. You made the decision that you weren't going to accept the identity of being the guy who went to a Weight Watchers meeting and complained about walking up the steps. Yeah, and and you and and here you are. Then all of a sudden, the body takes form of the identity you took. Yeah, that's interesting. Manifest destiny, almost. You know, get there and believe it. So, what's the motivation for you every day? You wake up, get out of bed, live your life, accomplish what you want to get done. What's your motivation? Finding finding one more man or woman that that was who I was, because that's what you know the person who felt absolutely hopeless when they when I got on the scale, I just I didn't want to be on the scale when I walked into a room when I whatever and I tried a million diets I well not a million but literally probably somewhere north of seventy different diets I, we added them up one time. And I just felt like I was hopeless and there was no way, but intuitively I knew that there was, that it was something that was causing me. So I'm looking for that man or woman there. I mean, there's 650 million obese, morbidly obese men and women worldwide. Okay. That's enough. That's a statistic. That's not my, my number. It's and one person's dying every seven seconds of, of, of an obesity related illness. That's 4.72 million uh, annually. That's worldwide. And in finding those ones, because here's here's what get, drives me. It's not to get them in their skinny jeans, not to get them where they can run marathons. I'll tell the people do that. I mean, we've had, had a lot of that going. What I get excited about is knowing that we've likely, they, not me, 
but they have increased their longevity, okay? And to the point where they'll get to this final meeting. We, we're all going to have it. This is a finite, this life that we're in right now, this three-dimensional life that we're in right now is finite. It is. We're not, we don't get to stay here forever. And in the, you, we all know that obesity is going to shorten it. We, we do. It's going to shorten the quality, and it, it is. You, you, nobody's arguing that point. It's going to shorten it. But I know that if you can reach that final conversation you're supposed to have, you're supposed to have an interaction with somebody. My, hey, might get struck by lightning today, and this might be the last conversation we have. Okay, I don't know. I, but, or, but very likely, the people who are obese will, will be taken out of that final conversation they're supposed to have way before their time. Yeah. And there's people, there's men and women that the ripple effect in time that will take place if they get to their final conversation, if that makes sense. And what, yeah, I, does. what I what I wake up every day is thinking, how can I get somebody else to that last conversation? And it might be 30 years, 40 years from now. I mean, it's in one, one quick story, you know, a client that was 52 years old, 388 pounds. That's what I call it. Um, excuse me, 52 years of failing at that. He was 70 years old. Okay. 388 pounds at 5'11. That's a unicorn. That is unheard of to be at that much overweight at that age. Heart attack survived all this. Failed on diets for 52 years, as I said. And, and this, to watch him, is, even though he walks with a walker, he can't exercise. Medically, he can't exercise. I mean, literally, he's walking around with a walker with one of those rollers on him because he's bent over because he's got fused vertebrae. So he shouldn't be able to lose weight, right? It's bull. He can lose weight, and he yeah. and he's down 100, 130, 140 pounds. Yeah, and it's so interesting to see see that, and and for him to realize that he's now got an, another day ahead of him mm -hmm. because of that. He's maybe a week, maybe a year. I don't have a clue. I'm not. I'm not God. Uh, but all, but to see that, and to know that maybe we have a hand in that at some level of getting people to realize that they're in control. It's not me. I'm not magic. And it's, it's the people seeing them change, seeing somebody like you, who, while you and I have never met until now, but to hear you tell the story of how you weren't going to take it anymore, how you, you know, the, what you'd experienced in your family, you weren't going to accept that level for yourself. And you, and you made the decision to change, really change your whole future because you did. I mean, it's, it, it's a big freaking deal. Yeah, it, is, it certainly you is. Did. Yeah, it certainly is. Especially when you have kids, you got to look at that, you know. I remember what I quit smoking years ago. I was like, I, before I had my son, I said, there's no way that's going to be a part of his life. He's not going to see it because they watch us. They know what they, you know, we can say what we want, but when they see it in person. So speaking of that, mm -hmm. everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Great question, man. You got me thinking. Who do I think I am? Who do you? I, I love that. Who do you think you are? That's it's like it. the good fellas. Who do you say, think you are? <laughs> That's it. I love. That. I love the good fellas. I love that. Yes. So, who do you? I think I'm the guy that got tapped on his shoulder to do something that he never in a million years would have planned out for himself. Never in a million years. I mean, I've been, I've, I've worked, had success in, in a lot of different areas, successful marriage, successful kids. I mean, all these different things. And I got tapped on the shoulder to do something that was completely out of my wheelhouse, 100% out of it. I mean, me and what happened for me when I, the way I got tapped on the shoulder was, you know, that guy, Dan, I told you, you say, you want to work with people and help them lose weight. And I laughed at him. Not long after he said that, it was probably three or four months there was a guy who had who heard my story. He heard kind of about my journey and he reached out to me on Facebook. I didn't know him personally. He said, I heard your story. And he said, I'm really struggling. Would you be willing to talk to me? And I said, sure. You know, I mean, I don't mind. I'm in my talk. And he said, you're, you're talking different than anybody I've ever heard. He said, because you know what it's like to be over 300 pounds. You know what it's, the experience is. And he said, would, he said, would you help me? I said, you mean like coach you? I said, and I was doing some business coaching and, and all at the time. I said, 
man, I don't know about that. I mean, I was really, I was really yeah. not wanting to do it. And, and I, and I said these words to him, I said, okay, I'll help you. I'll do three sessions. That's where we'll start and we'll see where it goes from there. But I'm not sure this is a, this is a good idea. I said, but, but let me just say out of the gate, I'll never tell you what to eat and I'll never tell you what exercise to do because that is not your problem. And and he and he and it was interesting as as he ran his first mile that he ever ran in his life at age forty nine I think he was or forty eight he'd never run a mile in his life he as he was down seventy five pounds and his his world came alive it was like it was like oh my god this is the it so who I am I'm I'm the guy that's, that's going to change the trajectory of obesity one mind at a time I don't think I've ever said that. That's awesome. So let's get to the crux here. If anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, find out, reach out, what do they do? They can go to transformmyfuture.com forward slash neon. I've actually got it, and that's N-E-O-N. I did that for your audience. Awesome. And, and what they can do is they can go to that link and obviously you just go to transform my future, but if they'll go to that link. I've got a special training that is totally free training. And they can, if they struggle with weight, if they've got 25, 50, 100, whatever, we show people how my wife and I dropped 192 pounds together. She ended up dropping about 63, 149. And, and how we show clients so that even if they struggle with weight their entire life, because they'll just watch that and do what it says. I've had, I've had people reach out say you saved my life with that video and, and stuff which kind of blows my mind because it, it's it's practical things that they can do but they can they can check it out um, they can see all that they want to see there and if they want to want to reach out beyond that it tells them how at the end of the, at the end of that video it's wonderful alan you're a pillar of strength thank you for your story thank you for doing what you're doing and it really does hit a personal chord so it's so great to see this transformation and the lights just keep spilling out so thank you sir i appreciate your story Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. God yes, bless. sir. Have a great day. Take care.